Welcome. My name is Mark Anthony Dubois Jr. And I was born the fourth day of July in the year of 1986. I want to say thank you for tuning in to try to figure out some more about these dogs. I had a whole pre-programmed -pre script that I was going to run real quick while talking about these dogs, but yeah, I just want to do it. You want to have a really nice dog? The only way you can have a really nice dog is if your dog is able to live on some farmland. The only way your dog is able to have a real good life is if it just lives in some land. It's able to just run and be free. If not, your dog's going to be trash. Your dog's going to be nothing. Your dog's going to be just not even mediocre. It's barely going to want to be able to function. You're, gonna, you're not going to be able to communicate with it. It's never going to want to listen to you. You're just going to have issues all the time. You're never going to be able to just get anything done. The dog's always going to want to run away from you. If you don't live on farmland, your dog is just going to have a horrible life for the rest of, rest of its life. It's just never going to be able to be fulfilled. It's just going to be a, a, a horrible existence that you might as well just give up on the dog. I'm saying that because how silly does that sound? But yet, there's people that said dog trainers want to explain that that's how you what have to do with your dog. You have to do their program to be able to have a nice dog or you're not going to have a nice dog. Your dog has to know how to do a perfect sit stay, sit stay, down stay, recall, play stay, all these stays, and then you're going to have a really nice dog. If your dog doesn't be able to do that, your dog's going to be trash. Your dog's going to be no good. Your dog's not even going to want to listen to you. It's interesting that the way that I said it to begin with, it sounds really, really mean. But the way that I said it second, it doesn't really sound so bad. It makes it sound like, yeah, my dog should know how to sit. Yeah, my dog should know how to do this. And that's, that's something I'm going to say is very, very deceiving, very, very manipulative on being able to get you to have a nicer dog. Because there's one thing that I want to talk about today that comes down to the concept of what it is that I do with these dogs that I don't care. You know, someone might say, oh, your dogs are nice because of where you are, because of that. I'm going to say, in reality, this is way more complicated to get dogs to want to listen to you than being in the city because out here there's just the abundance there's an abundance out here that i'm having to like watch every little thing at first to make sure that they're not getting into something i mean there's snakes out here there's spiders out here that can end their lives there's there's other animals out here there's everything out here i can't just let my dogs go chase the cows my bull will kill a dog in a half a second that's one thing that i, I want to explain to someone and it comes down to the concept of allowing your dogs to have more freedom and make decisions on their own as opposed to you having to come in and start to force and dictate every little thing because there's one thing that starts to happen when you start to rely upon. This is the thing that I, I think a lot of us are getting confused with. You're relying upon the obedience work to get your dog to listen to you. As opposed to the obedience work is just something added extra fun that we do. My dog already listens to me. That's what I want most people to understand. You know, as much as I've been, I've been messing up. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm not a show off. I don't like to show my dogs and show what they're doing and show what they're capable of. I don't, I don't like doing that. That's not, it's not my personality who I am. And I've been doing that with some of my dogs in, in quite a few of my videos. And even with this dog that... I feel bad for putting her in the pressure of just making her have to show off. You know, that's just not what, I don't like that. That's not what I'm about. I want people to listen to what I have to say. I don't want to have to show off something to say like, this is the right way or this is the wrong way. No way is the right way and no way is the wrong way. They're all just w what you make of it, what you're able to actually be able to do. That's one thing that any dog trainer, that any competent dog trainer is going to say. Whatever you can stay consistent with, that's what's going to matter the most. If you can't stay consistent with it, who cares? Whatever you, just not, nothing's gonna happen. If you're like, I wanna do all this obedience work and, and you give up on it in two months, who can, it doesn't matter. But the main thing I want people to really, 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 really have a core fundamental understanding with these dogs is do not think that my dog is going to listen better because of the obedience. My dog needs to figure out how to listen before the obedience. Because if you're relying on the obedience to get your dog to, to be able to listen to you, that's where you're coming into the, I don't wanna use the word disrespect, but micromanaging, man. That's when you're in the house, and your dog has a good downstay, now you have to like reinforce that downstay to get your dog to be able to understand how to hang out in the house. It just, it doesn't want to listen to you. It has to listen to that command or that cue, if you want to say it in a prettier way. But the technical way is cue. You, you have to rely on that. So every time that dog breaks that, so let's go to the place, place command. Every time your dog breaks that place command, you have to like do something to convince that dog to keep doing that. And what happens in most cases, not all of course, not all, not all, but most cases, we start with, let's get, because this is how I learned place. I, I don't know why, but that's one cue trick that I, I like. I like training it to dogs. I'm really good at getting them to understand the calmness with it and not the excitableness. Because when a dog is calm on the place bed, you know, we can, we can somewhat use that. But what always happens is it starts off fun. Hey, throw the treat, throw the treat, throw the treat, 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 treat. I just got treats, I got treats, I got treats. Stay on the bed. Then what always happens is the treats stop working. The treats just don't really get the dog to like really just stay on the bed anymore. Now you're like getting into like frustration because you're like, dude, I'm giving you your freeze dried beef. Why aren't you staying there? I'm giving you a freeze dried uh, beef heart, beef liver. Why aren't you staying there? What's going on? And you're starting to run into that case. And then that's where you need the leash of, oh, the dog got up, put the leash, put the leash, put the leash. So if you're, you're, you're always having to do this, you're like micromanaging every little aspect of that dog's life. You're not living free anymore. 
You're living like by every single, okay, you can be free, command, 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 free, command, command, command. And even in the free, they're in a command in the free. They can't just like hang out. They can't make a decision, okay, I want to lay here instead of lay there. I want to I want to stand instead of just lay. I want to I sit instead of just stand. You, you, we're not allowing the dogs to do that. And the more that we're micromanaging, the more that your dog in reality is getting, the words I want to use here is anxious because the dog doesn't know how to do on its own. It's just always looking for like what next to do. It doesn't know how to function on its own. And that's when you need more and more and more and more and more. And that's why your dog will list, seem like it listens, but then you need more to get it to listen. It seems like it listens, then you need more to get it to listen. You're just in this loop of just, your dog is not really in tune with you. It's just only paying attention because of what most happens is that treat or that leash pressure. And, and, and that's something that is just disastrous at the end of the day. Because one thing that I'm working on with this dog is just understanding. Now, I have different needs, I have different wants. That's what I want everyone to understand. My needs and how my dogs look with my needs, with where I'm at, this is what I do. You do not want to replicate this. I don't even care if you bought the property. Oh, that, that was not for sale. But it might be for sale soon enough. I don't care if you buy that property right next to me. It's a, a mirror image of what mine is. It literally almost is. Just has a little less trees. You are not going to do the same stuff with yours that I'm doing with mine. That dog is different. That dog is different. That dog is different. Every dog is different. I'm different. You're different. And, I, and that's the main thing that I think all of us should really, really understand. If someone is saying to you, your dog won't be nice unless it is this, that is, that is manipulation at the end of the day. Because I can say that to you. Your dog is going to never be able to be a nice, fulfilled, fun, happy dog if it doesn't live on what you see right here. If you don't have a field like this, this, this little section here is probably like eight acres. If you don't have at least an eight acre field like that for your dog to be able to run in, your dog's never gonna be good. That's, that's silly, that's madness. Your dog has to do what you desire, what you are looking for, what you are looking for that dog to be able to do. Something simple that I'm always working on this dog is being able to, I, I, I wanna be able to use and utilize her in, in the future of when I'm standing, I'm talking, I'm doing something, I'm presenting, I want her to just be with me. I want her to know that I don't care what dog or what kid or what person or what comes up, you just stay, stay right here. And, and I'm not gonna do it in a hostile sense, I'm gonna do it in the sense of just, what I wanna say is, I wanna change that language that I just said right there. What I'm doing to this dog right now is hostile, straight up. It's straight up, I got a leash on a dog. I'm restricting this dog from being able to leave, from being able to flee if she gets scared. I'm restricting this dog from being able to fight if she gets scared. I'm restricting this dog of life right now. I'm not giving her a choice right now. And that is enough that we don't need to put any more on top of that. That is enough. We are already destroying these animals by simply just putting a leash on. And, and, and I'm gonna keep on working on that to be able to get this leash to at some point one day be a neutral. We're pretty neutral at this point today. It's, it's nothing that's hostile. She's not like nervous and scared because the leash is on. She's just, she's just there. It's not much that's gonna be a positive unless when we're doing our pulling, then yeah, it's, it's a positive. We're, we're, we're doing what we're doing. She's, she's on bobsled team at that moment and she's, she's loving life, able to pull, and she only chases real hard today when she's on leash. She, she doesn't really do it much often, which I've been working on. But that's my needs, what I'm looking for. You are looking for something different. You need something different. You desire something different. But what's being sold to us is your dog is not gonna be able to function in this world if it doesn't have this extreme high level of, of obedience work on it. Your dog is going to be trash if your dog can't do obedience. Your dog's going to be trash if you don't have the, the word that everyone keeps throwing around is this control on the dog. Your dog is, is not going to be able to do anything if you do not have this control on the dog. And that is what is confusing most people today. Because the more control we keep putting, the more the dogs have no choice but to keep pushing back at that control. And some people, some dogs, you are able to, I'm going to straight up say it, the language that I see it today is, you can put so much pressure to abuse that dog to be able to shut that dog down, to not allow that dog to even be able to challenge that abuse because it's, it's under a life or death scenario under you. But that's where things get complicated because not everything on this planet is it gonna be more scared of you than that. There's gonna be something. So when something else happens, this is why some people, y'all dogs, you've been in your household five, eight years, and your dog's never done nothing. And your dog's never challenged and done anything. But someone new comes to the house. Your, your son, your daughter gets a new boyfriend or girlfriend and someone new comes to the house and that dog snaps and bites that kid. I don't want to say kid at that moment. Hopefully it's older, but a kid bites that kid. And you're like, whoa, dog's never done such a thing because it was finally for the first time in his life, more scared of something than that. The dog was scared of that and not scared of you anymore. You were just like, you're nothing anymore now. There's something new. There's always going to be that because that's how it is with this dog. This is what happened to me. And this is, I don't just talk just to talk. I see this in so many people's dogs. That's why when said you're in the house and your dog sits and lays and does all the stuff, it's all good to go. But when you're out in public, your dog is still reacting like a, a, a maniac because it's more scared of that than it is of you. 
I don't care what e-collar pressure you put on. I don't care what prong pre collar pressure you put on. You can get that dog to a point. But that's why most of that stuff and most of the said reactive dogs, it doesn't solve it. It doesn't fix it. It doesn't just permanently, we're done, we're good. We, we don't have that issue anymore. That's why you're always on edge. You're always having to be ready to tap that button, tap that collar, do something to that dog to get that through. Because something out there is going to be more, it's going to be more terrified. So it's like Johnny here. He was pretty terrified of me for a while. He's not so much terrified of me anymore. I can move and do and, sit and tell him down and tell him to sit. He, he's just like, okay, I'll just do it. But he's more terrified of the cows, the bull in specific. He's way more terrified of that cow than he is of anything that I could do to him. Because I've i had e-collar on dude. <laughs> talk about double boxing. I got that idea from watching dude on YouTube. But I double boxed that dude and put two of them on him. And it, it wouldn't stop him of being in that amount of fear. It wouldn't stop him from me literally choking the dude with my slip leash. That cow is way more dangerous than I ever could be. So that's why he would never, ever stop wanting to pursue those cows. He would never stop reacting because I'm, we're balancing, like, basically who I'm more afraid of right now. And at the end of the day, what happens is, worst case scenario, the dog will turn around and start to bite you because it's bark, bark, bark. You're pull, 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 and the dog comes back and it redirects and bites your leg, bites your hand, does something to you. That's that, Then you're just you're, you're in a lose-lose situation at that moment. That, that dog is, is saying a lot right then and there. It's saying a lot. And that's something that is going on with a lot of dogs right now because we're thinking that we got to do this stuff to get our dogs to be good. And, and, and I want to be a person to say that that stuff just doesn't get your dog anywhere. Because my Johnny, he knows all of these tricks. He knows city. I mean, we were doing out of sight down stays. We had to leave the building. They were in cluster stays of, of what, 15 to 20 dogs at a time, all like side by side, sitting by each other, laying by each other, down by each other, doing all this by each other. We had to leave building. We're doing all off leash stuff all around all the squirrels and all the rabbits and, and all the uh, the lizards and all the everything and all the dogs and, and all the people. And, 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 and the dog wasn't, it, once he realized something else that he was more scared of, all of that just went to nothingness. And I can't choose what the dog is nervous of. I can't choose. I can't pick and choose and say, oh, don't be scared of those cows. I mean, them cows are huge. My bull is, man, he's a big dude. And he's got a dead stare like, what you gonna do about it, buddy? And then he sends one of the little girls up to try to like do something to the, to the dogs that are trying to give him pushback. He's, not, he's last resort. If they moves all the girls around, then the bull comes in. He's like, what's up, buddy? I said, leave my ladies alone. And, and he has all right to be terrified of that. He has every right to look at that and say, I, I don't know. The same with the donkey. The same, <laughs> unfortunately, Johnny, John, Johnny, he, he act like he tough, but he not. The, the roosters would chase the dude around. And he's like, oh my goodness, he would take off running because the roosters ain't no joke. You start messing with the girls too much, they'll start running after him. And, and that's why more than likely today, he doesn't chase chickens more from the, them attacking him than me even saying anything to him because he's like, oh my goodness, you guys can all gang up on me and just hit me up at any moment. I mean, a dude would be waiting around a corner and just come and attack the dog. That's how they're, they're, they're tough. He has every right to be scared of that. He has every right to be scared of a dog that's coming up on the, on the trail or on the side of the road or in the neighborhood and, and he just sees one coming. He has every right to be scared of that. But it's what we do in that stance to get our dogs to understand how to be able to get past that. That's where the micromanaging doesn't work because that's where it makes it worse. The dogs are like looking for more, they're looking for more, they're looking for more. They're like, what do I do next? What do I do next? As opposed to realizing they can handle it on their own. They can get through it on their own. And we should be coaching the dogs on how to be able to get it through their own. And someone says, oh, Mark, that sounds so easy. How do we do that? It's not easy. It's putting in time. It's putting in the energy of saying, I want to do this. I desire, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to stand and get my dog exposed to as many situations that they're scared of to get them to be able to calm down and get them to be there calm without me having to do anything to the dog. I'm going to allow the dog to be able to get through this on their own. And once the dog is able to get through it a little bit, where they're able to just even like five, 10 seconds, you watch them build up and then I get like, okay, let's, let's, let's come over here. And it's not going to be anything hostile. It's not going to be anything like, like hippity hoo ha's and throwing treats and, and, and trying to use the leash to try to yank them around. We're just going to be able to easily, gently move around with very minimal pressure on that leash. It's already bad enough that we got these leashes on these dogs. And then we wanted to add up more to it to get the dogs more and more. I, I don't care what no one's got to say. We're putting the dogs in fear if you're using a leash to try to get the dog to stop doing something. I don't care what no one's got to say. That's why it just doesn't permanently work. And I want to see the proof of it permanently working by people seriously taking dogs that were doing something, take all your equipment off and put that dog in that scenario. The dog's going to flip out again because the second that it starts to like build up and it doesn't have that pressure, that micromanagement of you like doing something, the dog's going to explode because we, not, we, we never got the dog to like deal with it. And in reality, it makes it worse because the dogs, it, it, it gives them a shorter, shorter fuse. 
You watch your dog like a start the build and you're like, throw the treat in its face, like as fast as possible. You're like yanking on that leash as fast as possible with that buildup. You see that buildup and it's just yanking on the dog to get it to get out of it. That's gonna make the dogs worse. It's gonna give them a shorter fuse. And that's something that is, is, is why I, I'm seeing that most people were struggling. That's why today it's, it's I can't say this other than just, just, just saying it in a way of not trying to talk at someone and talk bad about what people are doing. But like, I thought we were working and training dogs here. I, I thought that's what we were doing as a person that's trying to help a person out with a dog that they're struggling with. I thought that was our goal. And our goals aren't that anymore. Our goals are like, oh, just put this collar on it and just push this button, the dog will stop doing that. And every day, just keep doing that, doing that, doing that. Eventually the dog will stop. But where's the proof that eventually it stops? Because all I see is people still struggling more and more and more. My goodness, my walk today, just let me see the reality back again. Dogs just flipping out at people. A beautiful dog that has no desire to even want to do that. I don't even know what that thing was. One of those, uh, 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 it's not the Cocker Spaniel, but it's the bigger one. My neighbor's got one. It's uh, one of those Spaniel dogs. They're not like human on, on edge and alert, but this dog is flipping out at everybody. Like, man, this is intense right now. And what's going on is the dog isn't being able to get through those emotions. We're trying to shut those emotions down. Like, you, that's not valid. You can't be scared. And that's where we're messing up. And that's where we're messing up with people as well, my goodness. We're messing up because we're, we're saying, I'm not scared, so you shouldn't be scared. You're nothing for you to be scared about. <laughs> Go back to that term. You want something to cry about? I'll give you something to cry about. That's what we're doing. And we're, I don't care if you're trying to throw the treat or not. It's, it's, it's not helping the dogs get through it. It's shortening the fuse of the dogs, and it's going to make them want to keep exploding more and more and more. That's why we need more and more and more. That's why the treat stop working. That's why the slip leash stops working. That's why the prong stops working. That's why the e-collar stops working. Then what? Then where do we go? Oh, yeah, put the dog down. That's what's next after a whole progression that just constantly I keep seeing keeps going on over and over and over and over and over again. And we could stop this by understanding that the, it's valid that the dog is nervous of something. It's valid that the dog is super overexcited about something. It's valid. Because that's just one thing that, that, that I just know for a fact is everyone wants it. You want your dog to be so nice, but you don't put nothing into it, man. You don't put nothing into it. You just, you just have the dog there and you're, you're, you're too tired. You want to watch the show. You want to take an extra bath tonight. You got this. You got that. You got this. You don't want it, want it. But you, you, you want the, the, the image. You want the, the, the life of it. But you don't actually do it. That's what I want to really explain to as many people as possible. Because that's what, I don't know what's going on behind closed doors in people's houses, but I do know what's going on behind closed doors in my home. I want it. I want my dogs to look good. I want my dogs to be able to not only just like do basic stuff, but I want my dogs to be able to perform. I want them to perform, not to show off to nobody, but we're working together to perform. The way that this dog looks today on our walks, when we're running, we're doing what we're doing. I, man, it's fun. I like that. I'm, we're doing this for us behind closed doors. This, we're just having fun. I do that with all my dogs. It's not to show off to the world how, how fancy and how pretty and how awesome my dogs are, how they can do sit stays and down stays for 18 miles away and, and being able to do all this stuff. I don't care about that. I care about the dogs wanting to do and us perform together and have a good time. And, and I want it. I want this dog to be like a good running partner with me. I want it because I like to run. She likes to run. And she likes to run a little bit more than I like to run at this moment. And, and, and that's what I want. And I want it. So I see what happens when I do stuff every single day. Granted, you're going to get me a day that I don't go and take her for a run. But I don't want to even run her, no, seven days a week. I only want to run her three, maybe four days a week. In reality, the other days are just walking, hanging, chilling, just doing nothing. But I, I want it, and I do it. I get it done. I don't care. I twisted my ankle three times today. First time I wore regular shoes in a while. I'm usually wearing my barefoot shoes, and I haven't had any issues. This is why I go, I wear my barefoot shoes. I don't ever twist my ankle in those. But uh, I want I, I took three times, and I still ran through and still got it done because I want it. I want it. I get up, and I do it. I hear the dog is whimpering. I get up and I'm like, what's going on with you? So that we can get past this whimper. That's what she started doing like, like uh, about three months ago. She said, I got to go to the bathroom, homie. And, and I want it. So I want to be able to get her needs met. Get out. Let's go potty. Now we don't have the issue no more. I don't have no potty issues. I don't have no, no, no issues with that any, at all. But any of the dogs cross the board inside of the house anymore because I want it. I get up and I make it happen. I want it. I'm trying to figure out what is it you want to do, what kind of work you want to do, what kind of play you want to do, what kind of fun that you want to have, what kind of food that you want to eat, where, what kind of places you want to go. I, I get up and I go and do it and I make it happen. I want it. And that's what I want more people to understand that that's simply how you're going to have a better dog. You want your dog to look so good when you go to the trails, but you got to do it. You got to do it. There's no fast track shortcuts to this. You got to get up, put the shoes on and get out there, get on the trail and get to walking. 
You want it. You want your dogs to be able to walk around the block. You got to get up, put your shoes on, get your water, get your Gatorade, get your Sprite, get loaded up with something, get your suntan lotion spray, bug spray on, get your crack clothes on, and get out there and get it done. Get walking. Get moving. That's what most people are not doing. But yet you're sitting on your couch, typing away, watching videos. Why isn't my dog getting any better? Because you don't want it. You, you want the, the, the thought of it, but you don't actually want the real application of it. I want the real application. I don't care if my dog looks and perceived to be like this perfect looking thing for the world. I want my dog to do what I want my dog to do. I'm looking for my dog to do what I'm looking for my dog to do. And it doesn't come down to me having to teach the dog anything that is outside of what I'm looking for for this dog. Still to this day, I haven't taught this dog a single obedience command, but yet she does things that obedience commanded dogs are incapable of doing incapable of doing. I'm going to straight up say it like that. And I don't want to have to show it off or do anything, but simply the video watching her spit baby chicks out of her mouth. I mean, show me a dog that could do that without a collar on. There's no trickery going on here. I don't have no e-collar. I've never even put it. I've never trained an official. All I said was out one day and she dropped something and said, good, good. And we learned out in that sense. I, I didn't, I don't do no training with her outside of <laughs> the only training I do is when she gets in drive, she sees deer. I say, let's go get it and she gets to running. She gets pulling, she goes cycle. I'm doing the opposite training, but yet she does things that dogs I see that have all the commands on them are incapable of doing. And, and, and incapable of doing in a way that they're like always, they're, they're looking for some support all the time. Always looking for support. And my dog is able to figure it out on their own. And, that, and that's what I want more people to just really, really, really understand what's being sold to you and what's being said to you. That you have to have it this way. Cause that's what I can say to you. You're, you're your dog won't be trash if it doesn't live on land like this. How realistic is that? And then someone else could say to you, your dog is trash if it doesn't know all the obedience uh, uh, commands. How, that's so silly to me. But that's what's being said. Like, that's the only way. The only way. Like, this dog, granted, he is laying there right now. I'm not telling him. I'm not asking him. I'm not demanding him. I never, I'm not even giving him no guidance, no language, no nothing to do that. He's just doing that on his own right now. That's just what in his best interest. Because even if I could say, hey, Johnny, down. And I'm saying, okay, you're good and I force him to do that, doesn't make him a nice dog. This is why for me, my main thing that I want people to really understand is you want to spend all of your said training when your dog is in a free command, not in an obedience stay command. Because the more that your dog is trained in an obedience command, the more that that dog is building to want to go crazy once it's free. It doesn't work the way that one day the dog miraculously just, oh, it's, it's good to go. You're having a constant keep up, down, down, sit, sit down, off, down, stop, out, down, out. That's like most people's language right now inside of your home. I don't even speak to these dogs when I'm in the house. I just look at them and we're like, we're just hanging out. We're chilling because I spend 99.99% of my day today. At some point I may put obedience on this dog, but I don't, I don't really care the more I keep thinking about it today, but I may, I don't know, it's up in the air. But the more I keep working on my free commands, the more I keep getting dogs that are just so chill because I'm saying, let's all calm down. Let's all relax. Let's all hang out. And someone's going to say, oh, you're going to have trash dogs. I would love for anyone to come and see me and take me and challenge me and put me in a situation to say that I have trash dogs that I do not teach any obedience cues to, that I won't say a single obedience word to them, but yet I will dance around this world that everyone has to have their dog in a strict regiment to be able to do. I could simply take this dog, this dog, I'm, I'm even the border collie who never even goes off this land somewhere. I could put him in the middle of a city in a, in a street and just stand there. My dogs would just hang out with me. Why? Because I want it. Because I do it. I get up and I make it happen. I hang out with my dogs. I chill with my dogs. I put the expectations on where this is just what we're looking for. We're not looking for this, this crazy madness. We're not looking for that. And that's why they want to listen to me. It's bad enough that they have to live in a house with me. It's bad enough they got to be on a leash with me. It's bad enough. And, and I got to make it more enticing for them to want to be able to do that. And I have to show them what I'm looking for. And when I show them how to be calm, man, they, they, they just appreciate the all heck and be out of me. But more obedience that I put on the dogs to try to get that dog to calm down is what most people are looking for. Calm your dog down. The more obedience that I put on a dog to try to convince it to calm down, the more that I have a dog that is not calm. The more that I have a dog that I'm always like spitting words out to. I'm always having a next command, next command, next command. I'm always nervous of when I say free and I allow the dog to be able to just run, not knowing and unsure of what's going to happen with that dog. That's, that's what most everyone that I see with your dogs are. The ones that I see that are putting these, these shows on, this little trick stuff on. You, you have to have your dog in a specific heel command, knowing that it has to do that or else you're not sure what's gonna happen. Your dog has to be in that strict regimen. How, how like unrealistic of a real world application is that? 
How unrealistic, because you're having to like watch the dog all the time. I, didn't, I literally no longer pay att any attention to this dog anymore at all when she's on leash. I don't need to look at her, I don't care. I know I'm good. I don't care what dog comes up, what kid comes up, what person comes up, what stroller comes up, what anything comes up, I know I'm good. I don't need to be in a specific command. And that's what allows the dog to be with a dance around the world so effort, effort, effortlessly, so chill, so calm, so just, we're free. She's always got a, hey, the life is good look. Not this, this down, head down, always nervous, always on edge, or the dog has to be in a high drive to be in this perfect heel to be able to walk everywhere. It's, it's always like focused, to can't do anything. How realistic is that? What's realistic is being able to hang out with the dogs. But yeah, dog training today is teaching you how to create the, the main thing that I heard this word the other day that it makes perfect sense is addicts, man. These dogs are like waiting, waiting for that, that, that opportunity to just like, Hopefully I get it this time. Whereas for me, we just chill, man. We hanging out. And this isn't because of where I live. This isn't even because of who I am. Because at the end of the day, man, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be a hostile type of person. I'm trying to get out of that lifestyle and just get into just a, just, I love you, man. Everything's good to go. But, but I, I come from very hostile upbringing, man. Very hostile. Very, dude, you want to talk about aggressive, I'm talking about gangster, man. I came from a very just just not so right lifestyle. And, 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 and I've been able to relax myself and be able to calm myself, be able to chill myself out, to be able to have a good relaxed uh, a relationship with these animals. Because when I would come in at them hostile, my life is hostile. I got videos of seeing my dogs all on edge every time I move, every time I speak, everything I do. They was on edge, man. They was on edge because it was sit down, down. They know what happened if they get off that down. It's gonna leash pressure coming. It's going to be a treat thrown at a treat stop working after a while, people. They just do for pretty much everybody. I just see it across the board. You either just accept that your dog is doing what it's doing and you just give up on it and you keep going at just trying to throw the treats or you just, 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 you just accept the feet in reality. Most everyone, I'm going to say like 99% of people, you accept the feet with just throwing treats at your dog, thinking that now my dog is going to listen to me and I'm going to be able to take it out in public better. You're working backwards. And then the same with the leash. Worst case scenario, you shut the dog down with the leash. You shut the dog down to the point that the dog just, it has no choice but to listen or it's about to die. But I'm going to guarantee you there's something else out in this world that it's more scared of than that leash in you. And that's where you're going to run into a scenario that your dog is going to put your, you and itself in danger. That's when you're going to run into a sticky situation. Because once that dog sees something else and it's looking at you like, I'll take that e-collar, I don't care. Because I've seen this, people. I've seen this. In my eyes with a dog's in my face that when they get pursuit to want to do what they want to do, that they are more afraid of. This is why for me, at the end of the day, I'm going to say most of these dogs, not all, but most of these dogs are scared of what they're chasing. They're scared of it. That's why they want to get to it and they want to get to it in such haste and such just, I got to kill it because they're scared of it. They're scared of the simple little chicken because they're like, what's going on with this thing? I got to get it. Then they kill it because they just, I got to get it out before it gets me. I've seen this with so many dogs. So when you put that e-collar on that dog and your dog is afraid of said squirrel, Squirrel, I didn't know squirrels weighed so much. I picked one up, I was like, dang, this thing's like 10 pounds. They're, they're heavy little, little creatures. And, and, and they're kind of intimidating in a way. They got these nails, they're, they're, they're not so sweet and cuddly. I mean, the rabbits even got long, uh, uh, like killer type nails. Your dog is full in pursuit at that thing, trying to get it. Your e-collar ain't gonna work, man. The dog's gonna blow through it because it's got something else that it has to do. Then that's where, then what? Because once that dog realizes the intensity, the max of the intensity, you're, you're at a whole new level of life right at that moment, that instant right there. As soon as that dog blows over that 70 to 80 to 90 to 100 on any of those collars across the board, that dog is now like, that's not gonna work anymore, buddy. That's not gonna work, then what? Then where do we go? And that's where someone's gonna say, oh, you gotta put the dog down now because, that, because that, the, the dog is defective. That's the word I wanna use right there. And, and that's just not what's going on. The dog doesn't understand what's going on, and we're not understanding that the dog is in fear of something. Because I don't care. I don't, I, someone's going to say to me, oh, no, Mark, these dogs are killing these things because they're, 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 they're killers. They're savage. Man, these pet dogs are so soft. They're not wolves. They're not even coyotes or little pansies. They're not that. They're domesticated animals. They don't have this, this desire to just, I want to kill everything. When they do, you got to really pay attention to what's going on. Because I've done this to... 100 plus dogs, maybe not 10,000, 50,000, that I've gotten them to stop wanting to kill things because they were killing it because they were nervous of it. Once I'm able to get them to be around it and realize that there's nothing to be nervous of, actually you are the strong one here. They start to relax and they're like, oh, okay, I don't, I, don't need to, I don't need to chase that anymore. I don't, I don't need to mess with it. 
and, and that's what starts to happen when the dogs get out of that fear. When the dog gets around a whole bunch of other dogs and it's real and it's barking and lunging and trying to bark everything away and it gets around them and it starts to calm down and it looks at him and says, oh, you're not actually trying to hurt me. That's just a figment of the dog's imagination of what's going on. It thinks that something bad is about to happen. And, and if that's more serious than the leash, than to you, I don't care what piece of equipment you put on that dog. That dog is going to blow through that. Then where do we go? That's what's going on with a whole lot of people's dogs that people just, I don't know why, don't want to talk about. You don't want to like put your face, I don't care if you put your face on there, but just, just talk about what's actually going on with you and your dogs behind closed doors. Everyone's on this, oh, my dog's so perfect. It's so amazing. It's so awesome. I still struggle with my dogs. I call this dog sometimes and she just looks at me like, man, I'll be there. Like today, she's at the porch drinking water. I'm at the van. Uh, I think she already had equipment on. And uh, I'm just like, let's, let's get in the van. Let's get on this run today. And she drank some water. I said, Ophie. And she just looked at me. And she drank some more water. And she just looked at me. And she just stared at me, standing there. I said, hey, Ophie. I even said it cute like that. Hey, Ophie. And I just, and she just stared at me. Staring at me. And I'm like, dang, what's this dog doing? You know what I did? I gave up. I just, you know, I just stood there at the van. I just waited. And she came like 10 seconds later, which I was actually surprised with. But nothing's perfect. I, nothing is, is just grade A. I get pushback from these dogs sometimes. And when we get our food time, granted, I'm, the food that I'm giving them is, is a little extreme. But she'd be wild, man. She'd be like jumping, spinning, somersaults, back flaps. And I'm like, let's chill out real quick. Nothing's perfect. There's things that go on that are just not always just so pristine and so amazing and so awesome. But there's always stuff that we're all co constantly working on. But the main thing that I know that I used to be doing in my house with struggling with this dog and my other ones is what most people are struggling with with your dogs because you're micromanaging every little thing and you have to stay on top of every little thing. And the second that you're not on top of something, you're in this like free for all of like, well, what's going to happen next? And then if you're not putting a level of punishment on the dog doing what it's supposed to be doing, you're in this free for all of like, what, what's going to happen next? And that is a horrible way to be living, horrible way to live. And that, that's why for me, you know, there's, there's, there's the way that you need to work with your dog and not listen to what someone has to say that you have to do. That's the number one thing that I'm hearing across the board. They, I took this puppy to the, uh, to the, to the uh, what is that place called? The doctor place, the vet place. The first thing she says, you need to hire a trainer. You need to put obedience training on this dog. Who are you to tell me that that's what I need to do with my dog? That's what I believe most of us are messing up with. That's why in reality, five people are going to listen to me probably in my lifetime because I'm no expert. I'm not going to put on no show. I'm not going to get into no, no fancy, I'll get into a sport of, of candy cross, but nobody is, uh, Oreo, all done. No one's going to get into that sport because, I mean, it's teaching the dogs to do what everyone doesn't want to do. I'm teaching this dog how to pull like a train, like to pull, man, like go psycho pull. No one wants that. I do though. So no one's really going to want to look at what I do in that sport in, in reality. But, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to show anything off. And that, that's why for me, I'm never going to be an expert. And, and not never, but I don't want to say never, but never going to be an expert. I'm not going to be that like elite type person to, to everyone be able to pay attention to because I'm not in this for like flash and like, ooh, look at me. Look what I could do. Look what I've done. and Look what I'm working on. It's, it's not me. That's not who I am at all, at all, period. And I'm not going to like build that gene inside of me one day. I'm, I don't care, man. I, I don't care. I love just being able to do what I do. And I feel bad for the pressure that I'm putting on my dogs of making them do stuff for me, making them show off at this camera for someone to be able to see. I feel so bad for him. I feel so bad for Ophie here the other day of making her, putting her in around all the chickens like that and just like, like just, just put on a show for the world to be able to see what we've been working on. That's just, that does, that sickens me. It's just not who I am. And, and, and since I'm that way, it, no one's going to want to listen to a single thing I have to say because people want to listen to the experts. People want to listen to the people that, that got all of that. And in reality, what's going on with all that? Are you actually getting the help that you actually need? Because I know for a fact, anybody that's even still listening to this video at this moment right now and listen to any single video of mine, you're struggling with your dog in a way that you're just not sure what the heck's going on. You're unsure. You're like, I thought all this would work. Behind closed doors, you know, you don't have to say it publicly, but just behind closed doors, and you're just sitting at home. I thought my dog would be better than this with doing the training that I have on my dog. My dog knows all the sit to down. It knows it all and it's perfect at it. It doesn't even challenge the pressure anymore. It's just, I say sit and the dog just does it. I say down and the dog just does it. But yet I'm still having huge issues over here. This is the thing that I hear a lot of people say, the dog is really nice, but this. And that but this, it's, it's like 1% say, is the part that's like, your danger radar is going off. Your danger radar is going off. And that's for me, that what I want to be able to explain to people, how to be able to get that danger radar to go away. Who cares how great the dog could sit if your dog is putting you 
They're making you uncomfortable, making you un, un, uneasy. Everyone's got everything to say. I mean, my goodness, some people in my comment section be, be just, my dog is so perfect. My dog, I can leave my dog here and do this. Great, great. But there's something and a reason why someone is watching the video because you want to know more. You want to learn more. No one on this planet is just mastered. We got it all. We got it all figured out. You're trying to learn more. And that concept of trying to learn more, especially like, again, being this deep in this specific video, you're trying to learn more because there is that something going on that you're like, I don't know what's going on right now. I don't know what's happening. And, and I don't even know where to go because every time I dig deep further into more said obedience, more of this, more of this, things actually are getting actually worse for some reason. The more tricks I keep putting to try to get this dog to do to get to get out of things, it, it, it keeps getting worse. That's why for me, it's someone could teach me all day long how to be able to get my dog to be at a perfect heel in the right position, in the right angle. I don't know that stuff. I don't focus my energy on that. Someone could definitely coach me to be able to do that. But also at the same time, that person that's usually coaching me to do that can't simply get their dog to do this. They can't take their high energy, high active working animal and be able to just get it to chill with them. And that's why for me, <laughs> get a dog like that to do that all day. He's so chill. He's so he's the average every day. What I meet, 99% of people, I got a dog like my Johnny back there. He ain't got a dog like this. Everyone's got a dog like that. Just a little bit in them that seems like they're, they're, they got a lot that they can run, but they don't really need too much. And, and if I'm able to be able to convince all these dogs, even my Border Collie barking at who knows what, but he was in a deep bark right there. I can convince him that dude that stop by speaking to him from a distance. That, 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 that's what I want to, people to really understand. That's what I shine at how to calm these dogs down, not how to jazz them up. And that's why I'm always gonna have a different approach. It, it, the, the main thing I want everyone to understand is start with that calm first. Start with hanging out with your dog and seeing your dog's fears and validating. Say, it's, it's okay to be scared, man. And be able to work your dog through that fear. Slow and steady, day by day, you work your dog through that fear. Every single day, it's gonna become less and less and it's gonna become less and less with everything else around it. I can, take this dog in a place and see that they're nervous and say, okay, you're nervous. Let's, let's just hang out in this a moment and allow the dog to be able to just get it through. They'll get past it. They get past it, but it doesn't get past it when you're just, oh, scratch this, give up. I quit. I'm going home. It's not going to get anywhere at that moment. You just gave up. And that's what most all of most all and probably 99% of people are with your dogs. You're not actually doing anything. You're, you're wanting to, but you're not doing. Simply every, that's why it's fascinating. Everything I do, even with making my videos, I'm working on my dogs on every single video of mine that you've seen. Even if I'm sitting down, I'm still doing something somewhere around that my dogs are inactive. We're doing something. We're making something happen. Right now, every day I got this dog with me. I'm doing a lot of training with this dog that most people don't do in a month. In this one video right now, me just staying in here, being chill, hanging with my dog, most people don't do in a month. I'm here for 30, 40 minutes a day, standing with this dog in this session, talking about dogs. And most people don't do, you don't do that in a whole month and you expect your dog to be able to get better. That's what I want people to really understand. It's not about getting more obedience on your dog. It's about doing more with your dog, making more happen with your dog, getting up and being more active with your dog, actually engaging with the dog, actually making stuff happen with the dog. That's what's going to get them to get better. Everybody wants the magic thing of how can I not walk my dog every day, but make it look like I do it every day. How can I not walk my dog and take it, to, take it on a hike, but every day I want to take it to the hike two times a year, I want it to look like a professional. It's just not realistic. It's not realistic at all. At this moment today, this dog here, she looks like a professional on the trails. She sees people, she stops, she comes back. She sees dogs, she stops, she comes back. She sees something weary, she stops, she comes back. She sees a squirrel, she's like, hey, can I? And I'm like, not right now. She stops and we just continue on. She, she looks like a professional. Why? Because I do it every single day. I have zero expectations of taking her for walks other than you can sniff, you can stop, you can pee. Just, I don't really want her to poo out there, but I try to figure that out. That's my next step of getting my dogs to potty on command on different locations, but only to make that convenient for me, but we'll see how that works out. But uh, just, just, just walk, 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 walk. Day after day, week after week, month after month. Looks like a professional. But if I'm like, I want her to look that way, how did you get that? Because people ask me that all the time. How do you get your dogs to look so good out here? Because I do it every day. Now, if you do it once every three weeks, your dog's gonna be once every three weeks looking. If you do it once a year, your dog's gonna look once a year looking. But if you do it every single day, that's what matters. And a lot of y'all, you're stuck in this, I take my dog around the block, man. Taking your dog around the block, what is that for the dog? What is that for the dog? What is that giving to the dog? What is that doing for the dog? What is that like enriching the dog's life in any sort of way? That's where you have to do something with the dog. 
and simply just grabbing the dog and going somewhere, even if it's your front yard, just stand there for an hour. Because most of you, you go around the block and a dog didn't smell anything, didn't see anything, didn't get engaged with anything, didn't nothing. And you expect that to be good enough for the dog. That's just, it, it's nothing for the dog. Be in the house and do something with the dog. Sit in the yard and do something with the dog. Take, get, 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 just go to the gas station, bring your dog with and go and come back with the dog. Just, just do small little things extra with the dog. And watch how things will start to get better and better. Thank you. <laughs> You're back here looking all goofy, homie. You got your ears all hanging up. That's just one thing that I just can't, can't get off this concept. I made a video the other day and I don't think I'm gonna post it. Cause it just, it, it starts to, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna post it. But uh, it's the concept of, we worry so much today in the sport world of the dogs like said, like looking good, which I appreciate. It should, the dogs don't lie. If the dog is looking happy, it's happy, man. If the dog is looking sad, it's sad, straight up. Just what it is. And, and, and it's weird that we don't apply that to the pet world. We don't care if the dog is head down, walking, walking next to you. We don't care. It's like, oh, we got our job done. We had in the sport world, we're like, we're working so hard to get that dog to look so, so pretty and so nice. And that's what I want more people to really understand. Your dog is next to you and it's just like, they don't want to be there. So figure out why. Why does my dog not want to be with me? What am I doing to make this dog be this way? Because that's what I'm constantly working on, especially with this animal here. She started off with this like, I don't want to be there. That's why she's always moving and doing what she's doing. But today she's just realizing, this is, this is pretty comfortable, this is pretty cool, this is chill. This is nice, this is comfortable, man. Real comfortable, real easy. It's, it's starting to become a little enjoyable. It's, it's take the world off my shoulders that I could just relax. That's what she's saying to me. That's what's going on with her. It's like Johnny, he just took off. He's like, you, you wanna go over there? I don't care what he does. Uh, let's see if he comes back. Johnny, come here. Where you at? There he is, he's way over there. And uh, I want the dogs to like, want to do it. Not be in this position that they're like, they're frightened. That they that they're that the, something bad is gonna happen if they don't. I want them to not even be like something good is gonna happen if if they do if they if they do like just just to come just to come just to be there. Uh, where you at? Come here, man. I don't know where this dog is at. Oh, come here, Johnny. I want the dogs to just want to do it and and not be in this. I'm about to get my I'm about to get beat down. I'm about to get hurt. Something's about to about to damage me. Something's about to destroy me. And, and I want them to be able to just, just enjoy the process and be, be cool with the process. Man, you look tired right now. What's up with you, homie? You look like you've been running. <laughs> Where'd you just go? <laughs> I want them to just, just be cool, man. But we're not focusing on that in the pet world. We're focused on like compliance. Just get it done because I said get it done. You gotta get it done. I told you to get it done. And who cares what it looks like the dog is doing it. And if that's like what we're looking for from these dogs, I see why people are struggling today. 